I remember way back three years ago when we started ID at Xbox, people asking me, oh, what game are you most excited about? And you know, I was very honest when I replied, but I, I didn't really answer the question. I just said, the game I'm most excited about is a game that I have no idea about. You know, we know that there's these amazing developers out there and they're gonna bring amazing content to the Xbox platform. Three years on from, from launching the program, I'm super excited to say that's exactly what happened. There's a couple games I played in the last couple years that, that, that really had an impact on me, not just because they were really interesting games, but because they were so unexpected. So the first one was Three Fourths Home. Now this entire game, you were driving from left to right, trying to get back to your house during a tornado warning in the Midwest. In the entire game, you've got your finger on the trigger to drive and you're just doing a conversation tree as you're talking to your mom. It's such a, 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 a weird concept for a game, and yet it totally works. It completely hooked me into the fiction, hooked me into the story. I was really emotionally involved. Um, and then on Xbox One, there's, a, there's an epilogue and uh, th that's included as part of the game. And it's one of the only times in my entire life getting an achievement has almost made me cry. Uh, and I, I won't say, I'll say what the achievement is because it doesn't say how to get it, but it's called uh, What Really Happened. And if you had, you know, been playing the game first and then the epilogue, when you get that achievement, it is just... So I grew up playing video games. I've been playing games as long as I can remember and playing a lot of different characters ranging across a lot of different storylines. But in 2016, there were just some amazing games that told stories that, that I, I'd never seen before and just with uh, a lot of really unique characters that I hadn't experienced in, uh, in the time that I've been playing video games. 2016, there's an amazing game that if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. It's called In Between. Uh, it's just, it's so the game essentially, so it's an African-American male protagonist and essentially you're going through this guy's dealing with his own mortality and it's and it's it's you know it's a guy you know without giving away too much this guy you know he's on you know he, he thinks that he, he may be dying and so you're you're he's going through the five stages of grief and loss and you're along with him through the ride seeing this guy as he deals with all of these different stages from from denial anger acceptance you know he's just in all the levels throughout that game correspond to one of to one of the stages of, of grief or loss and so not only is it an amazing game and it's, it's great because you know it has a diverse character and you get to see this guy kind of grow and 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 you know as a character but it really it, it is a powerful game and how it marries the gameplay to the actual narrative in the story it's it's a, it's a wonderful game i remember one of the things that stands out about that game was you're playing through one of the levels in depression and one of the lines from the game is uh if you face the dark it cannot harm you and so you're going through the game and you can see as you're, because it's a puzzle platformer, and as you're kind of going through the level, there's this darkness that is following you and it's kind of chasing you. And then as a character, if you turn around and face it, it stops actually coming at you. And so that just marriage of the narrative and, and, and the actual gameplay is just kind of one example of how that game really struck a chord and struck, you know, hit some really good beats. Um, it's just a wonderful game that I was so proud to see it come through through ID. Those guys did an amazing job with it. One of the most powerful moments for me playing a video game was actually playing the game Beyond Eyes. In Beyond Eyes, you play a young girl who has actually lost her vision in a tragic accident. And she decides to go out and explore her world for the very first time in search of her lost friend, a cat. And as I was playing, my oldest daughter, who was about five at the time, came into the room. And she was really curious about what she was seeing on the screen. And she said, and I explained to her that the character was blind and she couldn't see. And she said, Mama, are there people who are really blind and can't see? After a period of time, it was actually time for us to take a break and go and eat lunch. So as I was making lunch, I looked and I actually realized Lizzie was in her playroom, navigating her space as if she was blind with her eyes closed. The game created within her this deep sense of empathy for someone who she had never met, someone who she didn't even realize existed up until that moment. Another game that, you know, off the top of my head just delivered something really unexpected, it's also a driving game, uh, is called Wheels of Arroya. And in this game, um, it's set in late 70s uh, Italy, and you're driving on the, I think, the Amalfi Coast, uh, and, you're, and you pick up a hitchhiker or a friend who you met at a club the night before. And again, the whole game is the conversations that you have, what happens with hitchhikers you pick up, 
But along the way, it gets into these really deep subject matter like uh, abortion and just like all the stuff that was going on in politics in late 70s Italy. And this is like not something you ever expected to see in a video game back in the days when, you know, you were picking up picking up Pac-Man or Sonic the Hedgehog or something like nobody was saying like you know what you know what's gonna be awesome in, in 15 years is uh, is playing a game about Italian revolutionary politics in the late 70s. When I look back over the past year um, first of all ID at Xbox has this incredible portfolio of games but when I look back the one that really pops out for me of course is Inside. Um, Inside was such an incredible game because you know you're, you're dropped into this world and there's a lot of modern games that will give you quite a few tutorials Someone really didn't do that that much. You were just in this mysterious world and you're traveling through it and you're trying to unravel the secrets of this world. What I loved about the game was it felt like they literally just painted it on the screen. It was, there's nothing else but the art of the game. And the simplicity and the beauty of that with no UI, no HUD, nothing else touching the screen. Um, really brought a deep level of immersion for me. What eventually happens at the end and even beyond the end uh, was really kind of, it took me back. Um, you know, this wasn't a, this wasn't a 40 hour, you know, massive RPG experience, which is great. This was a, a really uh, self-contained, uh, really pure experience. Uh, going through that game, <clears throat> the puzzles, the twists and turns, trying to understand what was happening, um, provided so many incredible emotional moments uh, that I think is what makes games so special, what makes you know, the art of video games and storytelling and interactivity and uh, something you just don't get from any other form of entertainment. Again, it just speaks to the diversity of, of games today and the diversity of games that are on Xbox that, you know, a game like Inside can just exist on Xbox One and really just be a piece of art that I'm firmly confident people will be talk, talking about in 50 years and probably 100 years. Uh, and that's on the same platform as, like, the world's greatest arcade racer in Forza Horizon 3. It's just, it's amazing. And it, it makes uh, turning on my Xbox every day super exciting. It makes coming to work super exciting. And it makes getting to work with great, great developers all over the world super exciting. Because we just never know what we're going to see next. I hope is a great example of a video game that is working to really use the game medium to make the world a better place. And I hope you actually get to take on cancer. And it's designed for kids to get to play. Kids who are sitting there in a hospital, going through their cancer treatment, playing through and getting chemo, um, and getting to actually have control. The game I wanted to talk about was Thomas Was Alone. So it was really a lovely story, a beautiful narrative. Um, um, and it was actually a game that kind of dealt with these feelings of solitude and loneliness. Uh, not the traditional, you know, game where you go in guns blazing and you're the hero and you're saving all these different people. It kind of felt like as the main character, you're kind of saving yourself. So I absolutely love that, especially as someone with a family that has, you know, a history of depression and things like that. And dealing with that kind of anxiety uh, and that kind of stigma that comes along with that, uh, it was a really beautiful way to kind of portray those feelings. When I look back at Firewatch, uh, which was a beautiful game, artistically it's gorgeous, there's so much story there. And I remember there was so much uh, setup to why this character was in this fire watchtower. Um, you learned a lot about his, his history and the relationship that we had, and it just went into so much detail. But you felt like you really knew these characters and you knew what motivated the character that you were controlling in the game, and it really helped set up the framework for the story. The game that I want to talk about is 1979 Revolution. It's a game by Ink Stories. So what I really love about this game is just how unusual it is. Um, it kind of combines a lot of different media formats to create something that is just wholly new and entertaining, but also informative. So it's a game about the 1979 revolution in Iran. And for me, it was something that I knew very little about. And it's almost more like um, an experiential historical fiction kind of experience than um, a game in the very traditional form. So I feel like there's so much value, um, you know, in this team of, of experienced documentarians um, leveraging their, their documentary expertise and bringing that to the table to, 
create this immersive experience where you can learn something while putting yourself um, emotionally and, and in a sense almost like physically um, in the space of, of a journalist during this really monumental event. You know, the ID and Xbox program has uh, is an incredible, powerful program that, that some unexpected delights can come out of it. And one that I'm really excited about is, is Voodoo Vince. The original developer and creator, uh, when using the ID and Xbox program, went in and uh, has, you know, HDified Voodoo Vince so to, and re-released it for the Xbox One generation. And when this came out in was it 2001 or 2002, you know, 14, 15, 16 years ago, there's a whole generation of gamers that don't even know who Voodoo Vince is um, or Charmaine's shop, so they're going to get introduced to that through ID Xbox. Video games have the power to not only bring fun, but they can create empathy within us by showing us characters that we've never explored before, by putting us into worlds where we've never even dreamed of being, by having us go through situations that we're maybe happy we don't have to experience on a day-to-day -day basis, but want to better understand.